Welcome to Watts 3010 Introduction to Web Development. This course is part of the Certificate in Web Technology and Application Studies at Seattle University. I'm Becky Peltz and I'm going to walk you through the set of tutorials for the Skills 1 repo which teach you the basics of HTML and CSS. There will be a separate video for each tutorial in the Skills 1 repo. You only have to fork the repo once and publish to GH pages once, but I'll point this out in every video. The Skills 1 tutorials prepare you for Project 1, a page with internal navigation. So this, is, this uh, uh, tutorial is about floating images next to text. And what we're going to be aiming for here is having an image and then having text um, kind of lined up from top to bottom next to it. And for floating the, the image to the left here, it could go in either direction. Um, but for our example, we'll be floating it to the left. And this is a technique that's nice to know um, when you want to provide images next to text. We'll take a quick look at what, what it would look like if we didn't take this time and wrap this up to do the float, what it would look like by default. And so you can see the difference. So I'm in this Skills 1 repo, and I'm assuming that you've forked this from SU Web Dev and that you have got a local environment set up. So let's go to that and take a look um, at uh, what's going on here. So we're given this index.html and we've got um, a header, a paragraph, and then we have this div that contains our image and the text that we want to float next to it. Let's just um, take a look at this and see what this looks like before we do any work on it. So. Right now, we, we do have a container, this div. It's not really doing anything for us around these two. Um, and this happens to be in a paragraph. So that being paragraph is a block element, takes us to a line of its own. If I just thought to myself, well, I've got an inline image, and I've got a, um, and why don't I just uh, leave this text running in line? And indeed, because this image is in is partially in line and partially block, um, the text will f kind of float next to it and then wrap around based on the size of the window. So you can see, like, as you change the window, it wraps a little differently. But that's really not what we want. We want this text to be up toward the top. And to do that, we need to basically float two elements, which means they need to have block properties. So um, let's put the paragraph back. So with that two blocks, we'll just stick those into a container and then float them and see how that works. So in the readme instructions, there's some comments about working with images. And in earlier exercises, we had an image where we gave the height and width exactly in the HTML. And I'm not doing that here. But I do mention that one of the ways you can work with images so that they don't become skewed is to set a dimension on one, on one, uh, just set a, a value on one of the dimensions. So we have width and height, and then let the other one automatically scale. And so you can do that by, say, setting width to 50% and height to auto or height to 10 pixels and width to auto. And what will happen is the, the image will, will maintain its ratio with that auto, but just use one of the dimensions to uh, fix. So we're going to do that. And we'll also use that in just on a regular block element as well. So let's take a look at the instructions here. Um, we're going to add a style sheet, so let's go ahead and add the CSS and the style, and we'll add that in here. And we'll give it the CSS style. Okay, so we're ready now to, to work with a style sheet. I'll move that in over here. And the second thing we want to do is we're going to add a class to the div container. So we saw that div container it, it right now doesn't appear to do anything, but we're going to make it a container that we can do some floating in. So we'll 
we'll call this uh, class equal wrapped. Um, and I hope you're starting to see that you can really name classes and IDs whatever you want. Typically we use lowercase because the web doesn't necessarily understand uppercase, although it can. There are in places where like within using images you might put capital JPEG. And if you named your file with capital JPEG, it's okay, but if you didn't, you might not see that image. I tend to just use lowercase for everything, and then you've probably noticed that I, I use dashes um, when I'm changing sort of words like wrapped up. I would I would use a dash, and that's called kebab casing because it looks kind of like a shish kebab. Um, and sometimes you'll see this, which is called snake casing where you you're when you change words you use an underscore and there's also camel casing where you get kind of a hump when you go to a new word you use an uppercase um, but generally in in uh, CSS um, you're going to see the kebab casing but and lower cases so I'm, I but the naming is really something meaningful to you and and we'll be you know doing some reading and discussion on naming um, but I'm just going to call that wrapped because it's going to wrap around my image and my text and then we're going to do some styling on this container so we're going to make we want this the whole container so the actual image and text to only take up 25 percent of our window and so to do that, I'm going to use this wrapped. And I'm going to use the auto on this too. So I'm going to let the height of it be determined by the content automatically adjusted based on giving the width 25%. So I'm kind of letting the browser do some work for me without me thinking two pixel perfect. Sometimes you can't get away with that, but sometimes it can be um, helpful. Um, when when it you know it can adjust accordingly as the size of the window changes and then the text align left so we want any text in here to go to the left and we want to give a margin of one RAM so let's see if that made any difference out here um, we can see that it changed the the look of the the paragraph that we had um, and kind of chopped the whole like if I inspect this I should see that that wrap div is only taking up about 25 percent of the window and everything's been aligned left so that that's our container and now I'm going to get in and float my image so I'm going to use a specifier of wrapped image to just get at the image I'm going to ensure that the image is seen as block because I don't care about its inline properties and I want it to be floatable so it needs to be a block element. I'm going to give it some padding. I'm going to give it a width of 150 pixels and let its height automatically adjust. Um, so we can, we can do that. And you can see this text is wrapping around. By the way, this text looks kind of funny. It's, um, it's hipster ipsum. So hipster ipsum if you if you need dummy content, the typical uh, content you go after is lorem ipsum. It's sort of this. Um, you can find generators. It sort of looks kind of like Latin. Um, maybe it is Latin, but I don't really know if it has any real meaning. But designers and developers use it a lot when they just want to plug in some dummy text. And then this hipster ipsum, just instead of Latin, it's hipster words. So I'm just using those because I don't really have any specific content, but I wanted to give enough to really wrap around this. Um, so we're getting the wrapping there. And then um, the next thing we want to do is apply a clear fix after this. So we can actually use a pseudo selector. So we see that colon on the after to, to kind of set the, and this is a trick, okay, this is something that was developed as a trick. You wouldn't really necessarily be able to come up with this on your own, but it's in this, um, you can read about it in this link um, from CSS Tricks. As an alternative to overflow hidden for clearing, it is going to um, 
give you give ensure that you clear that. Um, now, if I didn't, it doesn't. It it probably. Let's just take a look at it. It's not going to make a huge difference because this wrapped paragraph, it's actually going to give you a line feed. But if I had less content there, let's say I took out um, some of this content here. Let's say I took that out and I, I didn't do the clear fix. What you see is that that content, because I didn't do the clear fix and the, the paragraph didn't pass this image, I'm actually pulling what I want to be below the image up into the float. So without that clear fix to clear the float, this is what you would see um, if you had more text to, that was actually wrapping around it. So let's put this back, put back our content, and we'll give our our clear fix so let's label this this is this is kind of a it's called clear fix trick for floating um, but now you see that we get the wrap and um, and even if I let's take out that content there that extra content and you can see that I'm still getting it the text moved up to the top of the image, but I am uh, not moving this text that I wanted to be below it next to it. So that is the, the value of that clear fix. All right, uh, so we, we've got our image looking the way we want and we've got control over the floating. So let's just push that out. And for my comments, I'm pretty just, I don't get into a lot of detail here, but I try to kind of mention what I've been working on because if I want to review the history of my get, I can do that. And so what I've got now is, let's see if I can find this. Um, pull up the repository and just check to see that it's rendering. And we have our image, and it looks good. So we're taking up 25% of it. We've got this image 150 pixels with the text wrapping around. So it's all about being able to control it and make it look the way we want. And that looks good. And again, you know, you're turning in this skills one. It's all included in that, your homework. All right.